This is DJ745, World of Reggae here in Jamaica, alongside my man Kareem from XTM Nation. Welcome, blessed love. Blessed love. Give thanks for having me. Blessed love to everybody out there. So this is kind of like a spiritual home for you because we need to tell the viewers where exactly are we conducting this interview. Yeah, we're at Anchor Recording Studios owned by the great Gussie Clark. And yes, this is a spiritual home for me. My father used to do a lot of work here. You know, like uh, most of the songs that everybody love were came out of this studio. The studio yeah. yeah, one of one or two out of these. There are two rooms that he used to really use. There are three rooms here, but he, he used to use Studio One and Studio Two, which is the same rooms I work out of. Mm. Yeah. Well, we're here today and we're kind of myth busting here with World of Reggae because, you know, there's there's so many things that the people need to actually learn and understand about the music we love so much. And your father was a very personal character. He didn't give many interviews. If you Google your father's name, you are very unlikely to see any interviews and things. Right. I had the opportunity to meet him once, maybe back in 1997 on the Messenger Tour with Luciano. A long time ago and you know he, he came across as somebody that was a very personal but a serious kind of man yeah, well, that's him that's him that's 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 a good way to describe him yeah yeah i don't think that he wanted to be in the limelight he was happy doing what he was doing making music yeah he's up well he means to say he would have rather his music speak for him you know he even don't need to go out and do an interview and thing like that but it is just more a personal person like you say it's not like a hype thing like oh i'm better than an interview it's just he's really very personal you know? yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah i think the only time that i've actually seen an interview in video is on the Barry Hammond. Yeah, yeah. so yeah okay yeah that's the, only one. that's the only one and i mean i wasn't there but i was like yo uncle barris you know them, them, them go way back them is bridging you know, but to him, I think his version is him didn't even know. <laughs> but I, found, I found it hard to believe still. But <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of lean to the next one. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're going to be talking about some of the great works that your father has put in and um, the legacy that he's actually created as well for the younger generations. You know, why is it that the music that your father started out on this journey 35 years ago in 1984 is still so relevant today? You know, so I want to get deep and understand more about the Burrell family. Uh, well, you know, to be honest, my father music was always forward so even at that time i don't think it was really for that time but it was relevant for the time but it was a forward type of music so it still live on to this time and appreciated by younger youths and you know enthused by younger youths i mean he's a person that listened a lot a different type of music too so like even if you if you're familiar with his catalog you'll realize that he wasn't really sticking to one genre really you know mm -hmm. like it's a fusion of, of things you know yeah a very eclectic person do you know what actually gave your father that first sort of like push into the music industry uh the first push i think is believe between uncle sly sly and robbie sly and robbie robbie and you know and um i guess other friends among him like george pang and black Dread, maybe yeah because mm. yeah. i always kind of saw that george pang black Dread, and your father kind of seemed to have a, a very strong connection and if you study the music and some of the releases some of the rhythms and things that were put out on the various labels kind of had a bit of a, a chemistry to them yeah that's true and yeah that's that's actually true that's very true like you know they work to the same musicians at time too you know what i mean so you, you probably get that feel at times for true yeah mm. But them have them differences, like, you know, I believe you could tell the difference between the powerhouse and an exterminator and even Black Hadred label mm. at times. Yeah. But sometimes the, the differences were very, very subtle. Right. So if you're a music person, you would see that. But if you're just somebody that soaks in the music as a as a fan of reggae music, but doesn't study it so deeply, you yeah. might not be able to tell. And then so the lyrical content of the tune too. That 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 too. That distinguishes. Yeah, that yeah. yeah distinguish between the labels. So yeah, as you say, if you were if you are a music follower, if you're enthusiast of the genre, and of these producers, you'd be able to to tell the differences. But to a normal person, it's really small. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Now I know that your father was born here in Jamaica, in Kingston, but then he spent some of his childhood in the UK, in Birmingham. 
you must have some connections in the UK. Yeah, man, my father he, he was living with his pops in the UK for a while. I'm not quite sure the the time period to at this moment, yeah. Mm. but yeah, we did speak about it. I spent some some young years there, you know. He had some stories, you know, and yeah, there are connections there. Like Black Azure, them is like family. I have uncles and cousins over there, mm. you know. what I mean, straight up. What must it have been like for you as a younger youth growing up, following what Daddy's doing? Uh, it was a, a learning experience. I mean, because he was a serious person. I mean, he was a joyful person, too. But you can tell the difference between when it's going to be a serious thing and when it's going to be a oh, relax. You know what I mean? So, like, when it's a serious thing, you realize a lesson thing. You know, at the time, as a young person, so he's just observing and it it was. Gravi it was easy to go. He was a person, you just gravitate to that energy, you know what I mean? Him orders and demeanor and just his mannerism is like, yeah, when you're so close to him, you're like, yeah, mad. <laughs> you're, you know, you're good. You know what I mean? So in, to have that opportunity, you know, not just say, oh, yes, my dad, you know what I mean? But he was also a nice teacher too, you know, a good teacher, I should say. But then I guess there was times when you as the as one of the children would know when something's not quite right or if you know that you've been up to some kind of mischief or something not that i'm saying that you would do that you would know just by that look oh, no man we're youth man and you know we're not perfect so like <laughs> we know it's just a look you know you just have to give you a look man and you know say you're something not too correct so you try to fix up your thing and you know what i mean make sure something right <laughs> change the look there. <laughs> And I'm sure that you must have accompanied him to many of those sessions because originally Anchor was based down at Slight Road. Yeah, all right. So most of my time is here on Windsor. I never really, I don't really have a lot of memory on Slight Road. Road. Okay. But Windsor, truth be told, I was actually here if um, when he was doing some over a, a lot of time. But one of my most memorable time was um, a overdub session with um, Mitchum Kanchin. Scene. So like at this time, they were working on. This, I read him that featured a track that a lot of people know, um, Sizzler Taking Over. So, like, I was there when Khan played the guitar. You know, it was an early morning session, and it was not that like, they had a lot of cars weren't here. Like, it was probably just Uncle Gussie vehicle and Fatty Scare, you know, okay, okay. and Mikey Care. So, like, yeah, the studio yard empty, and we just there. And him did just play this mad guitar riff line, you know, as, as you know it, like, you know, so like it was a memorable moment. As well as they have some time too, where I remember coming to pick him up, like all some seven o'clock in the morning, like still didn't even open yet, but he was here the night before. You see me, and he's just here, <laughs> and I actually come in and he's sleeping on the bench. I'm like, yo, what are you doing? <laughs> you see me, but. Yeah, man, a lot of my memories here with Lushi. I think, and a lot of Sizzler memories I remember here. Mm. Yeah, and this was what, early 90s? Yeah, yeah. I know, not early 90s. 90s. Late 90s. Okay. You see, late 90s. You see me? Yeah, around them time there. So, like, even like all, because there, there, there were a couple of summers where, like, my summer job was coming here. You know what I mean? Like, I used to be responsible packing the tapes and unloading the tapes and carrying the tapes in and out to the studio and even just familiar myself like doing some engineer sessions with like all uh, soldier hamilton stephen stanley like i remember even in studio one soldier was actually the first person that actually met me get a try off our mix you know like not just like touching the board actually get for record some okay, okay. you see me so that was that was a good that was a good memory too yeah mm. <laughs> So you kind of like almost learnt the skills that you have now almost as a child without actually realising it, I guess. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, I never, I, I wasn't, I was supposed to be like a pilot or something, bro. Like, I'm serious. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, it was fun and it was just a nice thing to be around. Like, I, it was a nice vibe and it wasn't, I guess it was okay for a young youth to be here because it's not like there's anything lewd or anything mm. going on, you know, so, yeah. And even just even being here to outsider, what my father label represent to, I even get to get familiarized with even other people. You know, like I even have memories. I remember the first time I saw Bounty Killer walk in this studio. Yeah, okay, okay. 
that was something I was like, what? <laughs> right in the press. <laughs> and I guess back then, this is when Bounty Killer was kind of like, yeah. he, he was there with Beanie Man and things, yeah. School of mine, so, and enough other people too, you know what I mean? Countless names, you know what I mean? But yeah, the studio, yeah, it was a, it was a very memorable, yeah. Cool. yeah. Now, through your father's musical works, he worked with pretty much everyone in the industry you know we can name dennis brown sugar minor gregory isaacs we could go on and on do you think there's any particular artist that your father really connected with i'm very sorry, man okay you say that without any hesitation at all yeah man very summer man they have a vibe man and 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 also miguel collins you know me sizzler and luciano yeah a uh, very still yeah, and who an next person I see him really click click with. I mean him click with everybody, everybody. you know, but you know it's just like you have some way you, you you know. It's just a, you rarely see them and you know, it's not a lot of people get to really, you really see that. Uh, so it's like um I call Aini. Okay. You see me. Like they them have a thing. So like yeah. Mm. And during the time I remember when working with Lucy, that was a yeah, there was like a even Whole heap of family picture, like you know, it wasn't just a studio movement, you know. I mean, it was we all ago like river and all of them thing there, you know, mm. them way there. So, yeah. I remember once Luciano said that like Fatis was kind of like the captain of a ship, and would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. for sure, for sure. Them call him the guru, you know. What I mean, he is definitely a real leader. There were so many labels. Um, we had labels like Vina, we had Exterminator, and then the E was dropped off the Exterminator. Now, again, there's been many myths that have been seen across social media about why there was the change in the name of the label. How do you see that change in the name? I feel like, okay, all right. it's just a, a fresh start, you know what I mean? I guess at the time, he visioned the label doing something else and even the name from Vina from um, Vina to Exterminator you know like Vina was a lady that was uh, you know was his partner at the time mm. you know what I mean so I guess it's a different vision when he changed the name and then even the time at the logo I think there was like a skull and bone representation and then now uh, this is a different vision now you know it represents a total different thing so it, it took on the line of judah on either side on both sides of the of the name you know so i, I believe is when you know like at times going through his his journey you know it's just he had a dip different um, representation because mm -hmm. one of the things that i heard was that the exterminator spelt with the ext it was changed to XT because somebody said that we shouldn't be exterminating things. Like I say, different representations. Representation. Okay, okay, that's cool. Well, it's good to actually be talking through some of these things because, you know, the, the, the legacy that your father has created, it kind of needs to be preserved, you know, for the generations going forwards as well. You're doing a great job in your own right with XTM Nations. Let's talk a little bit about your own productions. When did you first transition from just being somebody that was in the studio maybe with daddy to actually making your own productions so examination actually was formed after my father passed away so in the latter part of his work when we're working with um like jesse royal and kayla yeah, bliss i was there like as a second <laughs> you know it's not yeah. like with daddy like you know yeah his daddy's still here but my input was counted and and i actually sought off you know what I mean so this is kind of like this is like things like rock and sway and them kind of things so rock and sway, long rock days and yeah so you see when I listen to some of these productions you, it still has that authentic exterminator sound but almost like with a modern twist so maybe that's where your input comes in uh -huh. exactly right. yeah so like yeah, they, yeah man you kind of have it down like you know what I mean like it, him is really the leader you know, and I'm just really learning, but I have a different representation sure. or influence, you know, that I feel like could be inputted, you know, in the, in, 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 um, in the thing. So, 
and he did consider it so it was a good feeling too mm. yeah. yeah i mean you've worked with quite a few different artists over the last few years over the last seven or eight years um you've also put out some tribute albums living heart and in the last 12 months, we've had two installments of something called Tapes in the Oven, yeah. Volumes 1 and 2. Let's talk to the viewers about Tapes in the Oven. All right, so Fatty's Tapes in the Oven is basically a volume series of songs, a compilation of songs that um, that weren't released and some that were released, right? And I'm actually coming from the tapes or the digital audio tapes. So the, the name took on Fatty Tapes in the Oven. The Oven idea came because we actually have to bake the tapes before transferring them because they were stored for so long. So it's kind of self-explanatory. A lot of people don't really pick it up yet, but mm. if you kind of really know about transferring tapes, you kind of know the process that it has to undergo. Like a matter of fact, I think there was actually a, a visual of um, when they were remixing Bob tapes, like you know, and they went, you know, there's like a video, like they're going into universal storage, and it actually there's a small little looking oven, it almost looked like a microwave. Right. Okay. okay. You see me? That's actually, <laughs> and they actually did put the tape in. The tape. Mm. You see me? So yeah. So like I say, it has songs that weren't released and songs that were released. You know what I mean? And it's an ongoing volume series. We've just gone to the second volume so far. Okay. Yeah. Dare I ask the question, how many songs would you estimate are within the catalogue? I can't have put a number right now. <laughs> I mean, to say, um, I, I mean, I knew still, like uh, some of these songs, especially on this second volume, like the Turbulence and the Sizzler, they were recorded at the home studio where we were resided. So like, you know, I kind of privy to these songs, like I know them, you know what I mean? And I know how much more there, there are afterwards. <laughs> yeah. okay. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I can't really give you a number. I just know it's a lot right it's now. A lot. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, it must be quite a hard process actually going through a lot of these tapes and actually sort of like making decisions on what goes on to volume one volume two and so forth yes for sure you know it's just the vibe of curating each volume you know to give off a certain feel and bring you back to a certain era of what's going on you know so you understand so yeah it is it is a lot of decision making you know because of the how many tapes there it's not like like i really tell you just go and pick a tape because at the end of the day i have to get all of these tapes done but during the transfer you know you know at select and it's you know mm. yeah okay okay and what has the response been so far from the people of the world because you know when we first heard about this actual series we were kind of blown away by some of the things that were featured on volume one and then just out of the blue volume two's come about as well so you know i'm thinking of songs like the rush shiloh um the marcia griffiths the dean fraser berries and you know you look through the track listing and you think to yourself i need to get all of them now yeah, I mean the response, especially on the second volume. It, I guess it's because you know they were they were content with volume one, but when this one came, they were like, "Wow!" Well, you know what I mean. Like it, I felt the enthusiasm. A lot of people hit me up on like a, a vinyl requests and all, all of these things. You know, so a lot of reggae enthusiasts really love this second volume. So you know, I really think y'all should get it. <laughs> Most definitely. So for now, the two compilations are available as a digital download. Um, is there any plans for a physical release? Yeah, there is. So my angry just. That's weird, man. I'll soon oh, give tight. it, all right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> soon give it a date and thing. But okay. there are plans, okay. all right? So we need to watch this space for some new vinyl of the tapes in the oven coming in 2019. We're keeping our fingers crossed here at World of Reggae. Yeah, man, definitely. 2019, you should be seeing some. Okay. Now, outside of the projects that are preserving and maintaining your father's legacy, you're also working on some new productions yourself. So we have some good combinations to talk about. Yeah, actually working on another project. Um, we're actually remixing some aspect of my father catalog. So it's whether I remix uh, my sampling vocals or rhythm, you know, and I'm adding new artists to them. Mm -hmm. So it's a project that mean a lot to me. Actually, about to release the first single, which features um, Cesar Taurus, Riley Chino, and Dre Island. You know what I mean? So you can look out for that title that is Every Nation. So, I mean, you know, it's going to be wicked. <laughs> For real. I mean, let, let's just go through that again. Hold on. So we said Sizzler, Chino, 
Dre Island and Taurus Riley on one song. Yeah, man. Wow. Yeah. So now you're even going to tell you, when you hear it, you understand what's going on. And I'm going to tell you the whole, you know, semantics of the track, but something special. Very much so. Definitely one to look out for. Um, outside of obviously the work that you're doing with some of the living, sorry, the tapes in the oven and also the remixes that you're working on, is there any other artists that you're currently looking at working together with? Yeah, I mean, we're looking at young talent at the moment, you know what I mean? A, a couple of artists out there. But um, you'll see. Definitely, you know. You know, you, you hear and you'll definitely see. Yeah. Closing question, a lasting memory of the work that your father's put in. How would you like things, how would you like your father's legacy to be remembered in 10, 20, 30 years time? I want it to actually be remembered as a very celebrated catalogue, you know, of music. You know what I mean? A diverse, respectable work of art, basically, yeah. Which I think will happen because the music that was being made and is still being made was longevity music. It wasn't something like a quick hype thing where after six months or a year, people are going to stop listening to it. You know, why is it that people are still looking for those records made 30 years ago, 25 years ago, 20 years ago? You know, people are kind of crying out for some of those songs. And that's, you know, testament to the attention to detail that yeah, you know uh, yeah this type of music definitely i totally agree with you i mean the type of feeling and the effort and the hours that you that that, 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 that was put in to making these these projects and these music these records you know what i mean it's it i can't even put a name or a word on it but i know it's just a quintessential vibe so definitely it will spring off into the coming generations and appreciate it as such you know Cool. Well, Kareem, we give thanks for your time today. Um, thank you for doing some myth busting here with the World of Reggae team. Is there anything else that you'd like to add today? No, oh, man, give thanks for having us, you see me? XTM Nation, Exterminator, Fatis, bless up. Give thanks every time. One love. Bless it. Cool.